recap on evolutionary theory. So please ensure that you know the main points of Bowlby's theory. So ASMCI, so you understand why the theory is adaptive and useful and what that means, why an attachment is useful. What is meant by social releases and how they um, help create um, and sort of develop an attachment. What is meant by monotropy and what a monotropous relationship is. The critical period, not to two and a half years, sometimes called a sensitive period. Make sure that you're aware of that figure. Um, and you know what an internal working model is, how it's a template. So with this in mind, today we're going to move on to the next lesson, which is um, an exploration and description, basically, of The Strange Situation by Mary Ainsworth. And this is something that, it's a key study that you need to know a lot about. And if we just have a look at the specification, you can see here, it's actually named on the spec, and it's kind of got a bullet point to itself, and that clearly suggests that you do need to know this in a lot of detail, and you could get a 16 mark question on this. And it has come up as a 16 mark question already. So if you notice, what it says on this bullet point is, we've got Ainsworth's strange situation, types of attachments. So that's really what the focus is now. So we're going to look at a study that explores and explains three different, there are actually more than that, but for this study, three different types of attachment. Um, and then we're going to move on to the next bit, which is cultural variations, if you want to do any reading ahead. So that's what we're looking at today. So first of all, something that we need to think about before we go into this session is, um, or are, should I say, individual differences. Attachment is not an all or nothing process and there may be variations. So when you're looking at this study, I want you to think all the time, does it account for individual differences? And you know, you could argue that in some ways, yes, it does. But there is also, um, an argument that it, it doesn't account at all for massive variations between people. So when we're looking at this, um, I want you to have a think about that. And when I see you on the 2nd of July, I will show you the video clip of this, but I do need you to go and have a look at videos of this. So I'll show you afterwards and I'll make, I'll add onto Teams um, some attachments where you can see this. I've got an actual DVD for this. Uh, which I can't add on Teams, but I will try to give you as many clips as possible, but you do need to see this. So this is a study originally created in 1971 by Ainsworth and Bell. So first of all, I just want to flag up that this is Mary Ainsworth. It's a female researcher in psychology. We don't see a lot of them, particularly one who's so influential like Mary Ainsworth. Um, and she created what's called the Strange Situation Classification and you might therefore see that as SSC. And if you do see that, you know that they're just talking about the strange situation. So actually, that's, this is um, a controlled observation. And that's why I said to you, you need to know what a controlled observation is. And we're going to talk about on the 2nd of July, how to design one and how to carry out an observation. And then when I meet you in September again fully, we are going to carry out observations. You're going to have to, in order to understand um, the research element of the exam and how to design a study. So this is a controlled observation of children's attachment behaviour using the strange situation. So you really need to look at a YouTube clip here. So what I'm going to do afterwards, I'm going to upload a, YouTube, a couple of YouTube clips and I'm going to talk over them just so that um, you understand what this is. So I've never taught this lesson before without yeah. using the videos, so it is quite hard. So first of all, it's a controlled observation, so it is not a real life. So what Ainsworth and Bell did, they created um, a controlled observation setting where it, they created a kind of fake playroom, which had two-way mirrors so observers could look in. So the idea now is that you're bringing a mother and child into an unfamiliar environment, but they did try to make it as friendly as possible. And again, I will show you um, the videos of this and some images a little bit in the next video. Um, so what happens is the mum and the child are in this playroom and researchers are watching 
through a window and they have a behavioural schedule which I will talk about a little bit later on in the video and I'll show you how to design one. Um, and they are looking at behaviours and they are coding and recording behaviours. So what happens then is the child is approached by a stranger. The stranger comes into the room and the people behind the two-way mirror start to observe the changes in the child's behaviour when they are approached by somebody unfamiliar. And that is where you're actually looking at something called stranger anxiety. So you are measuring how distressed or not distressed the child is when approached by someone they don't know. The mother leaves the room and you observe what the child is like without the mum there with the stranger. And then the mum returns and then you have a look at what's called reunion behaviour. So what we're looking at all the time are the differences with the child. We're trying to see what the attachment is like between mother and child. So if you have a look at the bottom, we've got three behaviours. There are more than this, but these are the ones that I want you to think about. And most importantly, think about whether these are measurable and what kind of things you might look for in order to measure them. So the first one, separation protest. How might you see that in a child? What might you actually see? What behaviours might you see? So what you might see is crying. You might see a child, a baby, putting its arms out as the mum walks off. Um, you might see some sobbing, some rocking and so on. So think about the kind of behaviours that we might see to show separation protest. It could be holding onto the mum's leg, the skirt. It could be um, walking after them when they're going, anything like that. Stranger anxiety. So what they feel, and what they, what they behave like and do when the stranger starts to try to play with the child. Do they just accept it? In which case there's no stranger anxiety. Do they cry? In which case there's high stranger anxiety. Are they not bothered? So that's where we're going to look at that. And finally, reunion behaviour is reunion behaviour with the mum. So when the mum comes back into the room, do we see the child, for example, smiling, being happy, going over to the mum? So when you do it carrying out a controlled observation, you've got to know what you're observing. And that's what makes it different to a naturalistic in a lot of ways. Because in this case, we've got clear behaviours that we're looking for that should be measurable. And if this observation is successful, then those, of those categories that we're looking at, like separation protest, should not be ambiguous. You should be able to clearly see those behaviours. So a couple of images here where you can see the mum is in a room with toys with the baby. And again, we've got another one here, a similar, another um, variation of the study. Uh, you can see the mother is there with, actually, I think this is the stranger, um, in the room with the child. So, three patterns of attachment were observed. Essentially, the majority of children were found to be securely attached. And I'll talk about what that is in a minute. And you do need to know these figures. They're very, very easy. But 70% of the attach of the sample in the original study were found to be securely attached. 20% were found to be called insecure avoidant, and 10% were found to be called insecure resistant. They are named on the specification, so you need to be able to describe each of those, and we will do that next and make sure that you're okay with those. You also need to recognise what those three attachment types are. And that's where we're going to use the video in a second where I'm going to go back over this and show you exactly what I mean. So Ainsworth suggested that the attachment type was determined by the primary carers, i.e. the mother's behaviour. And what's interesting about this is that it's actually putting a lot of the onus and the blame almost on the mum. And I want you to think about that in terms of the ethics of this study, but also in terms of the implications of this study and, if you like, the idea of social sensitivity, that we're basically saying that the mum's behaviour is um, a direct kind of 
um, has a direct influence on how that child is going to grow up and create its internal working model and that is quite inflammatory in a lot of ways. So now we're going to just have a look at the attachment types and then I'll move on to the video and show you and try to show you what these attachment types are. So if you have a look here, you should be able to see the, these should be behaviours that are measurable. So a secure attachment is defined by when the mother leaves, the child being upset or subdued. Again, think about the type of behaviours that you might see when that happens. Um, so that is um, separation anxiety, that first one. The second one, positive, happy when she returns. So that is reunion behaviour. So what, how you show that positivity and happiness, that could be through smiling, through laughing, through hugging the mum, through going over and getting hold of it. It could be anything like that. And finally, we've got the stranger anxiety, which somebody who is securely attached is generally avoidant of the stranger, but not overly distressed, but generally friendly as long as the mother's present. And I want you to think about why that might be and what it is, therefore, that the mum provides that allows the child to have confidence. And Ainsworth concluded that this is associated with a mum or a caregiver who is very sensitive and responsive. So please ensure that you are able to describe a secure attachment and you need to be able to recognise one as well. And I'll go through some of the worksheets a little bit later in the week to show you how to recognise one. The next attachment style is called insecure avoidant. And if you think of the word avoidant, it's somebody almost who doesn't um, face up to something and tries to not almost deal with something and i'm just saying that to try to give an idea as to what this might be so first of all we've got the word insecure so this is not someone who has a secure attachment with the mum and the type of attachment they have is a, um, an insecure avoidant one so again if we have a look at those three behaviors what are they like when the mum is absent so what is the separation anxiety like <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and if you look here it says <coughs> sorry they're unconcerned by the mum's absence so there is no separation anxiety and that's really different from a secure child next they are unresponsive when she returns so there is no reunion behavior there's nothing and in terms of avoidant, this is a, I'll try to show you in the videos, this is a difficult one, but the generally avoidant of the mother and stranger, they don't really treat the mother and stranger that differently, uh, but they're certainly not scared of the stranger. They certainly do not show any stranger anxiety. They might even interact with the stranger. And this is associated with unresponsive primary care. So a mother or a caregiver, perhaps, who doesn't give the child a lot of attention and leave the child a lot alone a lot to self-soothe or perhaps sitting in front of the TV watching stuff and not really being that attentive or responsive. The final one is the trickiest one and I have always struggled um, to find a video of this and I probably will struggle again because um, there's only one on YouTube that kind of shows this but it doesn't show it completely so I will go through this afterwards just to make sure that you're okay with this. So if we look at those three behaviours again, the difference here, if you think about someone who's resistant, and that's why I've put this image here of this child with his hand up, you are pushing away against something. But this is more than just being resistant. It should probably be called insecure, resistant, clingy, because this is a child who mixes between the two, between a kind of resistant aggression and a ridiculous distress and clinginess for the caregiver. So when the mum leaves, the separation anxiety is incredibly high. They are very, very distressed. Um, they are struggle to cope very much. In terms of stranger anxiety, they are very distressed. They show fear. They will try to walk away and hide. And what's very interesting is the reunion behaviour. And what you get is a mixture of rejection, which is resistance, but also clinginess. And there's always a lot of crying on reunion. And it's almost as if 
the child is completely annoyed and offended that the mum has left them and they don't know how to respond to that so they're happy to see their mum but they're also very upset that she or, or or he whoever it is left so they're the three attachment types this is associated with very inconsistent and mixed primary care so this might be a caregiver who's very attentive on one day and different on the other so giving quite mixed messages okay so you need to be really aware of those i'm going to come back onto this after i'm going to stop this now and i'm going to go and refer to the videos